What's going on smart people? Today is all about classical mechanics. More specifically, I want to talk about Lagrangian and Hamiltonian form formalism. I was wanting to say formulation. I'd rather save the subtleties of the math for a future video. Probably tomorrow's actually, if that's what people want. So today's going to be more of a qualitative description of what these formalisms are and how they're useful. I'm going to be showing key equations, sure, but I'm just not going to be deriving anything or doing any problem solving here. And before I get started, I think it's nice to take a note of, in Newton's formalism, it's pretty much all about cause and effect. I push this box on a ramp with this much force, what will happen? If you increase the complexity of the system, like say you have a pendulum that's doing what pendulums do, rotating, swinging, there we go, words, uh, and then you add another one, you string another pendulum to it, then you've got some stringing go swinging going on there, and then you've got the other pendulum independently swinging, and you have to keep track of all of the forces that are acting on both pendulums. Problems like that get super annoying when trying to use Newton's laws, but Lagrangian mechanics tackles this from a different angle. Instead of being concerned with the forces that cause the change of motion, it's interested in the minimization of a special quantity called the action. If, for example, you have a projectile motion problem where you have some object at point A at time T1 and then at point B at time T2, you could trace as many paths as you want that could be the trajectory the particle took. Lagrangian mechanics says that the path that it did take is the one which minimizes the action. Not to get too technical, but I think it's worth it to define what the action is. It's defined as an integral from T1 to T2 of another new quantity that we call the Lagrangian. And the Lagrangian is defined as the difference between the kinetic and the potential energy. Two scalars. And that will depend on those possible trajectories. And the notion of minimizing the action leads us to the principle of least action. Nature would rather walk downhill than uphill. One thing about the real trajectory in this example is that they would satisfy what are known as the Euler-Lagrange equations, which you can then obtain the equations of motion, and then from that get the actual trajectory. Euler-Lagrange equations are analogous to Newton's second law, F equals ma, but instead of dealing with vector-valued forces in terms of differential equations, you deal with the Euler-Lagrange equations in terms of generalized coordinates, meaning coordinates that don't have to form a vector. So if you have some ugly-looking classical mechanics problem where your system is subject to a bunch of different constraints and you have to find all of these forces, all that good stuff, it might be easier just to try to express it in terms of Lagrangian mechanics. Next, formalism. Moving on to Hamiltonian mechanics. There are a couple ways to segue into this. The first is to say that the Hamiltonian is what's known as the Legendre transform of the, Lagr Lagr of the Lagrangian. I'm not really going to get into this. I don't think it'll be too helpful for those of you who are brand new to the idea of a Hamiltonian. But basically, with a Legendre transform, you're transforming a function of one set of parameters into another function of those parameters' conjugates. And in this case, the generalized speed's conjugate is the momentum. I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to read more about this way of describing the Hamiltonian, but for now, let's keep it simple. For simple systems, the Hamiltonian is just the total energy of the system, the kinetic plus the potential, as opposed to the Lagrangian being the kinetic minus the potential. But this is only true if your generalized coordinates have no explicit time dependence. What am I doing with my hands? If you associate Lagrangian mechanics with the Euler-Lagrange equations, then Hamiltonian mechanics has Hamilton's equations. And these are first order differential equations in terms of generalized position and momentum. One thing to note about Lagrangian versus Hamiltonian mechanics is is that with n degrees of freedom, the Euler-Lagrange equations gives you n second-order differential equations to solve, whereas Hamilton's equations gives you 2n first-order differential equations to solve. Classically, all three formalisms are pretty much equivalent because they can describe the same things, but you can also use the idea of Lagrangians and Hamiltonians to construct a certain formalism in quantum mechanics. But the Hamiltonian is what's encountered most frequently, at least in undergraduate physics, because the Schrodinger equation is written in terms of it. In this case, it's a Hamiltonian operator, but still, it's kinetic plus potential. Or you can use the Lagrangian to derive Feynman's path integral formulation of quantum mechanics. I could go on about the formalisms, maybe start talking about Poisson brackets, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. Let me know in the comments section if you'd be interested in seeing some problems worked through using Lagrangian and Hamiltonian mechanics, and I'll see you guys there.